Hey everyone, this is Jens Ansø. This is my shop here in Denmark. In one of the earlier episodes, I talked a little about my frustration about it not being quite there. I've been in this shop in various um, configurations for the past 22 years, and I've started to see a pattern that every five-ish years, I need something to change. I will tear it down, I will rearrange the machines, I will rearrange my tools, and I think it's about five years since I last did that. It also has to do with my method of working that changes. So my layout for my main bench needs to change every now and again. Another reason for me to make the changes is that in the beginning, 22 years ago, I needed a functioning workshop. I didn't consider aesthetic all that much. I needed it working right away. Over the years, I've considered the aesthetics more and more, and now I need something a little nicer. This is where I work eight, 10 hours a day, and I need it to emphasize my work in the way that the aesthetic in my workplace reflects on my work. That's very certain. For now, this is the main focus. This is my main bench. This is where I assemble all my knives. This is where I do layout work. This is where I do most any work around the custom knives that I build. So this is where everything happens. And while I like it, 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 it's time for some changes. This over here is a secondary bench. I call it my jeweler bench, though I don't make jewelry. This is a big mess as well. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking about what we can do about it. And I've been thinking about it for several months and I've been discussing it with Henrik, who's my in-house commenter. Everyone should have a Henrik. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, everyone should. Everyone with the shop should have a Henrik. Very soon we will tear everything down, then redo the layout for all the hand tools, all the shelves, uh, all the drawers, and then slowly build it up again. But we will build a base for me to develop the new space. I'm sure some of you will think that this is way out of hand in the way that how much I consider the aesthetic, but I also know myself well enough that I look around and look at, for instance, this countertop here, which is particle board with plastic on top of it, and I hate it. It has served the function well for several years. It was inexpensive. And let's just face it, I, I take a lot of pictures. I post a lot of pictures on Instagram. We do these video shoots and ideally I would like my shop to be pretty. So every time I, I, I have some parts, I have some knives that I need to take a picture of, I can put it down on any surface and it will make a pretty picture. This <laughs> just doesn't cut it. This, however, strangely enough, this is the industrial strength plywood with water resistant surface. This has an aesthetic that I really enjoy. This doesn't pretend to be anything it isn't. And that has become kind of an ethos for me over the years as a designer and a knife maker. I don't enjoy things that pretend to be something they are not. So this granite top <laughs> here needs to go. In all those thoughts, I've come to a conclusion that I will have three main materials on my walls here. It will be oak, which is my favorite hardwood. It's just beautiful. Painted plywood, black plywood, but where you can see the, the wood through the paint. And I have this thought that brass combined with oak and black will be super classy. So I think I will add some brass details on the wall, but that's all to be decided along the way. But having a solid foundation for a solid idea for the new setup with black and oak, I think that will um, that will be a nice start. This is the current state of it, and uh, very soon we'll start to have some new stuff going on here. This is the main grinding room, and this needs 
a redo as well. I have some polishing machines that I don't have the room for. I have a belt problem. We've talked about that before. These are the original walls, the brick walls that have been, in lack of better knowledge, chalked. They are painted white with uh, chalk back when it was a dairy factory. And the walls are in somewhat poor condition due to water damage before I got the new roof, uh, just because of age. But now we put in new windows and I want to do something about the walls. I'm out of space and everything in here is needed. So there's very little I can do right now. But this is the room just next door to the uh, grinding room. This is my new surface grinder, which is fabulous, but it takes up so much room. We just learned that uh, we will get a little more space on the other side of the driveway where we have the CNC machines and all that. So maybe in a few months, this machine will move to the other side of the production and that will free up this room which i initially had planned for my old surface grinder which i use all the time but it it's not really needed inside my grinding room and getting that out here will free up a tremendous amount of space and this is mainly operated by christian and uh, ellen so it makes sense to move it closer to where they're working and it will free up more space for me, and I love space. If you saw my workshop tour, you will recognize this room. This is the old CNC room where I had two harsh machines jammed in here along with a couple of workbenches and, and other tools and tool cars and all different kinds of stuff I needed for running the CNC machines. But two and a half years ago, approximately, we moved the machines across the driveway, which left this room sort of unused. And it's been a mess since. Now I've been emptying it out for a few weeks now, just every time I walk through it. My studio is right up here and my workshop is right downstairs. So every time I walk past, I tried to bring some of all the clutter with me to clean it out and we are almost there now you can even hear the sound has changed quite a bit in here <laughs> so the plan for this room is to have kind of an extended area from my studio the leather workshop i will have a few lounge chairs probably some vinyl setup as well my goldsmith table that is being built soon next week while i'm traveling the painter will plaster the walls paint uh, walls and ceiling paint part of the floor black leave the wooden floor intact paint the stairs case the windows the door then i can start moving in with stuff but right now I, I don't have anything planned yet so this will be one of those projects where i'll just build on it as we go but uh, i really look forward to having that extra amount of nice space and now for something completely different Right now we are relatively early in the day, as early as Anas allows us to start. <laughs> we are in the middle of the process of redoing my sacred workspace, the inner space where I, I make all the, the folders. Henrik is, is right now preparing to, to hang, up, hang up the new tool wall. Is this custom built, Jens? Yes, custom built by Henrik, who is a genius. So this will be the area where I will have all my hand tools. I will custom make all kinds of small fixtures for my tools. And just having a nice and representable way of showing my, my favorite tools is so nice. But what I like the most is this section here. So I have these sorting boxes where I store everything from my screws for the folders to parts for each individual folder. And while it's needed, it's it's not the most aesthetic solution to have storage in. So now Henrik made this custom system to hold all these um, boxes here. And it's just beautiful. To me, the workplace is represented in the work. It's so critical for me to have a nice workplace and it's just been semi nice for too long. So actually now spending time and money in, in doing it right is so good. 
I really like to change things up every now and again, but looking at this has me feeling that we're coming close to the final state of the shop. This is furniture quality. I really love it. Really, really love it. What I've come to learn is if you don't have a system to organize, you can't keep a tidy workshop. So I actually try to shave down what I have in my shop so it's only the bare essential plus a little. I need to, to be able to solve the known jobs that I have around building a folder. But now that I'm also starting to make fixed plates again, it changes a little bit, but I don't want all kinds of crap in the shop that I also use for electric work or repairing a grinder, stuff like that. It needs to be somewhere else. And uh, this process that I'm in now gets rid of all the clutter. I built this workshop 20 years ago or something and we're trying to fi find the studs in the wall and it's being a little challenging so there's no plan perfect enough that it doesn't require a little, um, a little adjustment. Anyways, this is sort of the French cleat system except it's not, but this will support the, uh, the tool walls. Now it actually looks and feels planned and on purpose. There's so many small details around a workshop that starts out as a temporary solution. I think I mentioned that in an early episode, there's no such thing. Temporary becomes permanent. Actually planning something like this from the start and executing on it is so nice once you start seeing the result. And I will actually take this as an exercise in not allowing myself to establish temporary solutions around this setup at all. And I will allow that because I will take the time needed to actually make each solution nice. Obviously, it won't function 100% as intended from the start, but I won't put up something and say, okay, we'll deal with this in six months. I will actually try and make everything nice from the beginning. So this is just such a super start. And I actually planned ahead a little bit and allowed for six or seven trays here that doesn't have a function at the moment. So I have thought ahead of time a little bit. I know it will fill up fast, but that's okay too. I'm super curious on how this will affect my workflow. Every type of thing that I do here evolve around the spot where I do it. Um, fitting locks or fitting screws or doing sass and finish on the blade, stuff like that. Everything evolves around a symbiosis of my work area, the tools at hand and, and how everything is within arm's reach. This is also a study in first order of retrieval, a concept that Adam Savage came up with or at least talked about in some of his videos where you don't have to move one thing to get to another. So everything is within arm's reach and it's visible. And this is, is the perfect exercise in actually making all that happen from the get-go. Super excited about this. On to tearing this down. So here's an interesting thing. This is my main little knife maker's anvil, and this has followed me for almost 20 years, inspired by Bob Tozola's similar knife maker's anvil. And, and this really illustrates a lot of how my, my brain works. If you recall one of the previous episodes, my studio is built around an electrical outlet in the floor. Everything is planned around that. The walls, the flooring, everything. So this setup is made so <laughs> this will slide in. <laughs> A simple thing is never simple in the Enzo shop. I always have to think three steps ahead. And I know that I would have hated if I thought I could put this in here and it would go clunk. Doing these 
minor adjustments of the shop that it really is. This is a minor adjustment in a physical way, but a huge adjustment in my daily life. But this makes me so happy that I actually found a place where I could build my shop, expand my shop as needed because moving a shop, oh my God, that is horrible. And I know several makers who have moved the shop one, two, three, four, five times during the span of their career. It's not fun to move equipment around, reestablish your whole work routine and actually try to find back to something that really functioned well. Now this has me a little dressed out and, and it's such a tiny part of the whole shop. So it, it really makes me feel fortunate that it's only this much and that I've found surroundings where it will allow me to expand, change everything all within the same walls. I love that. <laughs> Maybe now we can already see the massive change these two has done to the whole room. Maybe it's um, tricking me a little bit, but it, it seems much bigger now. But this concludes this episode uh, of um, the first installment of redoing the entire Enso workshop. Maybe this is a 50 episode <laughs> series. <laughs> I have no idea. One thing I do know is that I'm super inspired now to just continue the process all over. I hope you liked this episode. Uh, be sure to subscribe and hit like, all that. And most important, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave me a comment. Uh, I so much enjoy reading all your comments and uh, I will answer every one of them when time permits. Don't expect me to answer immediately, but I will answer everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.